Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Decatur. If you were to walk out of your television room for any reason now and leave the sound on the TV, you might swear you're in Western Europe because the first music we're going to, he going to hear during this piece is from street organs, which are very popular in, in Europe, not so much in the United States, but neither are collections of Nickelodeons and reproducing player pianos and music boxes. All of these things are sort of remnants of, of a wonderful era in Europe. And Dave Marr in Decatur kind of keeps that alive, don't you, Dave? Because your collection is, is this remarkable uh, uh, collection of Nickelodeons and calliopes and music boxes. And it's, 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 is it fun or what? It's great fun. <laughs> and there's a lot of musical history in these instruments that we will be seeing today. And uh, uh, it's been my pleasure to rework, rebuild a number of these instruments. And that's also been a very interesting part of this collection as well. That's right. And when people are watching this, they, I think they'll marvel at the fact that not only do you collect these, which is, which is, uh, you know, pretty, pretty interesting in itself, but you also know the innards and you've taken them apart and you've reconditioned them and rebuilt them in many cases, because a lot of times you get these old instruments and they're just kind of junk, aren't they? They sure are. <laughs> they sure are. They don't work. And yeah. uh, it uh, takes many hours to restore one of these uh, automatic musical instruments. Yeah. I, I call them mechanical music instruments. Is automatic, is that the more appropriate word? More appropriate, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and what people will find out is that most of these are activated by simply by by the player yourself cranking and yes. keeping the air going into the instrument correct and then these this this complex system of stops and all these pipes and everything that that operate on the pressure of the air that's correct really. that's correct some of the technology that we're going to be seeing uh, today is really remarkable most of that this technology was developed from about 1900 to about 1924 and no computers or anything to help develop mm -hmm. that technology and it's really quite remarkable. Yeah, I wanted to start with street organs because you're very proud of this one. It has a beautiful sound. But I'll tell you what, you really have to you have to stand away from this because they put out a lot of music, don't they? Yes, a lot they of noise. do. Yes, they do. Yeah. This instrument has 124 organ pipes, seven different stops, and uh, it can really put the music. Well, let's hear out. what it does. All let's right. hear it. You had just started a new uh, section of the band right, down here, hadn't right. you? These stops that we just saw you move, they, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden the, the, uh, the, 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 the horns came in, I guess, yes. right? Uh -huh. So you can, you can play all kinds of different arrangements with this. That's correct. I have two flute stops, uh, violin pipes, piccolo pipes, mm -hmm. trumpet pipes, mm -hmm. pan flute pipes, wow. and bassoon pipes. And I can turn those on and off during the while the music is playing to give whatever sound I would like mm -hmm. to that particular section of the music. And it's all documented on this roller. It gives, it commands the machine to do what it's That's supposed correct. to do. That's correct. It's remarkable. Just punched holes. Just punched holes. Yeah. Right. I like this guy too. What's, what's his story? <laughs> well, his name is Jojo and uh, he accompanies me on all of our organ rallies that mm -hmm. we travel to around the country during the summer and the fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's quiet. He doesn't cost much. <laughs> 
and uh, he's <laughs> he just a good companion. He doesn't companion eat, eat much, does and he? And doesn't eat much either. And you, you're dressed as sort of like a, an organ grinder would have been, what, in Western Europe yes. around the turn of the century? Yes, this is a German type. Uh -huh. Organ grinders outfit. Right, neat. Right. Hey, this one over here is very attractive too. We, we're, we're not going. We've got so much ground to cover. We're just going to take a look at this one. We don't have a chance to hear it. But this is different. Yes, a little different. That is plays 31 notes and has 124 pipes. Mm -hmm. This is a 20 note organ, and has 78 pipes. Mm -hmm. And it has six stops, uh, similar to those stops on the other hey, ones. These are the stops you're talking right. about, right? Similar mm -hmm. to the other one, right? And it's not as big, and it doesn't have as many pipes, but right. uh, but it, it puts out a, a lot of sound too. It does, doesn't it? yeah. Right. And you also have maybe your most recent one is one that you can. It's portable. Yes. You can put it around your neck and wear it, and you can walk down the street with it. Could right. you show show us yeah. that one? Because sure. because what I find interesting about this is they're still making these. You ordered this from Austria, right? Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. Now, what's what's really handy about this, when these things break down, you can fix them. Yes. You know what to do. Yes. Yeah. They probably don't break down. Once you get them reconditioned, they're pretty good to last for a while. They right? sure are. They're very dependable, and if you recondition them properly, they'll last for many, many years before you have to do yeah. anything to them. We're standing in a room full of music boxes, player pianos, um, a calliope is in here. Mm -hmm. In the other room, there are organs and Nickelodeons, etc. So why don't you and I go in the other room and take a look at what you got in there? Okay. Let's go. Good. <laughs> Dave, your wife must be very patient. Your, your living space here is all full of musical instruments. <laughs> full she's, of musical instruments. She's very helpful and very accommodative. <laughs> I hope she likes the music, too. Uh, I think she does. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, before jukeboxes, mm -hmm. um, if you went into a tavern or a, a playhouse or some kind and, they, and you wanted entertainment, in many cases you would find a Nickelodeon. That's correct. And it looks like an upright piano, but it, it does things on its own, doesn't it? It does. This is a Seberg F. Nickelodeon made in 1913, and it has a rank of violin organ pipes as well as a mandolin rail mm. and the piano. It's beautiful, and it was a work of art. Look at the stained glass. Yes, this is the way they made it. When I first got it, it was a basket case. This is one of my more labor-intensive rebuilds, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they had to make a couple of panels of new glass for me, but uh, it turned out quite nice. And you had to rebuild the innards of it, oh, too. Yes. Any idea how many yes. hours you might have put into this? I probably got uh, close to a thousand hours on this. <laughs> it's a good thing your time's not worth much. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, that might be true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you used to play for a nickel, right? That's Back right. Back in the day, because that's, that's what right. they call a Nickelodeon. That's right. But it's not that way anymore. Inflation no. has... Inflation's hit, <laughs> and it's now a quarter. <laughs> Can we hear it play? You bet. Oh, neat. <laughs> That is remarkable. It sounded like there must have been 20 piano players just going as fast <laughs> as they could. That's fun, isn't it? It is fun. Yeah. It's fun. It, um, it's musical history being reproduced. Yeah. Now, you don't hear those all the time, but over behind me, there's even a rarer one. Yes. And I think I'm going to say this right. Orchestrion? Yes, that's Orchestrion. Right. This, I thought it was, I didn't know it was an instrument. I thought it was just a, a chest, you know, something uh -huh. that you might hang things in. Um, but show it off to us a little bit. You bet. It's a Seberg KT Special. It has 11 different instruments in it. Uh, it was made somewhere between 1926 and about 1932. Um, and uh, that, that's when Seberg, or 
KT specials were made by Seabird. Mm -hmm. The same company that made the Nickelodeon? Yes. Okay, same Chicago company. company. Out of Chicago, right, mm -hmm. right. Okay, well show us, okay. if you would, show us how it works. You bet. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and put the, the quarter in, which is another quarter machine. Mm -hmm. We'll get it started here, and then I'll open it up. Okay. Dave, whether they know it or not, almost everybody has heard a calliope. Yes. Because that's that's the instrument they would associate with circus. Correct. And, and, and it was really made for, by circuses, because when they would come to town, they'd haul this huge calliope into town with them, and they'd start playing, and that announced the arrival of the circus, right? Right. They, they were very loud instruments, and you could hear them for miles, and mm -hmm. you're right. That's how they knew the circus was in town. Yeah, and that was the point, to hear it for miles. That's so everybody, correct. the kids would yank their mom and dads and say, let's go to the circus. Right, right. Um, and back then, they were steam-powered. Yes, back with the circuses, and they were steam-powered on uh, stern wheel river boats as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They used you, to have them. You have one, and you, you got a good si idea of the size of these, and, and hauling these around is quite a chore. It's not something you take around to your street festivals. But give us a sample of what this sounds like. This one is elec electrically pumped, right? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. But it would have been steam pumped back in the day. Yes, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, this is called a theater calliope, so it is voiced much lower than what the circuses would have used. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, you can tolerate it in, in, a, okay. in an enclosed we'll, room here. Okay, we'll get a little sample of it. And if you would, too, open the doors for us you so bet. we can see how it operates. Sure. Okay, that's terrific. Okay, now from the circus to the sublime. Yes. You have an instrument right here next to it that it's rare. It's called a reproducing player piano, right? Correct. And this is a remarkable thing to listen to. Um, what you've done is you've opened up the panel for us so we can see the uh, the roller, the roll, 
and you've also taken the top off for us so we can see the action when uh, when the roll uh, act, when it when it's activated and when the when the hammer are they called hammers hit the strings yes. uh -huh. um, if you would give us a sense of what this sounds like tell us what we're going to be hearing and then we're going to discuss the difference between this and a regular player piano okay this is a chickering uh, six and a half foot grand piano mm -hmm. it was made in 1924 and uh, I totally restored it. It's a very complicated, complex, uh, vacuum-operated machine. And uh, it uh, reproduces the music, mm -hmm. as we will talk about in just a okay, moment. Okay, all right. Let, let's hear what it does, and then we'll discuss all how right. it does what it does. All right. Uh, there are, most people are familiar with an 88-note standard player piano, and that has virtually no expression for each note. A reproducing piano creates all of the expression and the pedaling that the artist originally played this piece with. And so when this reproducing piano is played, if you're standing next to it, it will sound like the pianist is actually sitting there playing mm -hmm. the piano while you are listening to it. Okay, let's have a listen. All right. That is remarkable. That is remarkable. And uh, this is this is part of your collection, and this yes. is how we're going to describe how this is done. This is, of course, from uh, Chopin, and the, played by Nikolai Orlov. Correct. Now, somehow, through the magic of early technology, they figured out how to get the artist's rendering of a piece on that roll of paper. How that's, do they do that's it? Correct. How do they do it? They had a recording piano. Uh, that the artist sat down and played the piece and that recording piano would use an ink pen on paper and it would it would measure the intensity of the hammer blow on the string when the artist was playing the piano and then after the piece was done they would take that visual recording and would uh, punch the holes in the paper roll that would enable the reproducing piano to play it at the same intensity that the artist originally played it at. That's remarkable. The technology was really quite remarkable. So Mr. Orloff and all the other musicians that were in this in, in this industry, they would approve then approve the work before I mean they had to say, yes, that's the way I played it, or uh-uh, we gotta redo that. Right, one. exactly. It's remarkable. Yeah. And you've got a collection that includes all the greats. I do. Mm -hmm. They actually sat down Gershwin, uh, others sat down and played, and you've got the proof. Right, right. So I can pull a recording from my collection, and if I want to hear Rachmaninoff, or I want to hear George Gershwin, it's like listening to him in person. <laughs> wow. It's a great experience. You mentioned while we were talking about this piano that, that you rebuilt this one. Yes. And you have many. Now, I asked you, well, do you have any projects in the, work? and you, in the works? And you said, yeah, uh, I can show you a little bit. So let's go in the other room and see how, what makes these things tick. Okay, good okay. enough. Okay, Dave, here's a work in progress. We just saw the reproducing player piano. Yes. And you rebuilt that one. You're in the process of rebuilding another one. Come right. over here if you, right. for me okay. if you would. Mm -hmm. 
and tell us what, what in the world is this? Well, this is the, what they call the stack of a reproducing piano, which is an upright piano. Mm -hmm. And all of these are valves. There is a valve for each note, mm -hmm. uh, multiple valves for each note, as a matter of fact. These are old rubber tubing that carry vacuum to actuate the valves. Mm -hmm. And this is about a hundred years old or so, and the rubber tubing is just oh, no. just brittle. It just oh, breaks well, apart. Oh, well, no wonder you have to rebuild it. So yeah, that wouldn't. All of it has to be taken down. Every screw removed. All of the innards rebuilt because there's nothing that is salvageable other than the hardware, mm -hmm. and all of the mov movable parts have to be completely redone. Oh my goodness! And so now it, it's very tedious uh, because you've got all. I mean, how many valves are there? Well, there are a couple of hundred, a couple of hundred valves. that have to be rebuilt. And all of these on the back here, these are all little bellows? Is that yes. what we're looking at? Uh -huh. so, so all those, I see, okay, what's happening there. So those, the, 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 the vacuum tells that how high and how far to go right. up, right? Correct. And of course, they're all stuck and, and yeah. the rubber is all rotten like you just showed us. Right. Oh, man. Right, yeah. It's a very labor-intensive process. Uh, I have about, as I mentioned, about a thousand hours in each of the pianos that uh, I have rebuilt. The, base, the basic operation of a vacuum-operated automatic musical instrument is a, a, an air-operated valve. This is called a pouch, mm -hmm. and it's made of very thin leather, uh, eight to ten thousandths of an inch thick. This is what we're talking That's about, That's what right? we're talking about, right. And when the uh, uh, paper rolls over the tracker bar, and it's time to play a note, according to the paper, mm -hmm. that little pouch rises. That little pouch, and that's that thin, ultra-thin leather you're talking mm -hmm. about. Okay, so each one of those, has you have to cut and paste that Correct. on each. Correct. Oh, my goodness. And then this goes on top here. Uh, and there is a valve on the inside of here, and when that pouch lifts, it moves a valve, which is right here, mm -hmm. up against the seat and causes the vacuum to go from one channel to the other and go to the part of the piano that it needs to reproduce the note. So you've kind of improved, you've kind of improved the system here. Yes, you? I've improved the design a little bit. This is a rebuilt uh, valve, uh, uh, which is ready to be installed. Mm -hmm. And there are about 110 of these oh that have to be redone. And there are numerous other leathers, different kinds of leathers and thicknesses and so mm -hmm. on. This is the mechanism that's used to regulate the amount of vacuum going to each note on the reproducing piano. There's one for the treble side and one for the bass side. This has been rebuilt and it's a very complicated system for very minutely regulating the amount of vacuum mm -hmm. for each particular note that's being played on the piano. And this is similarly another piece of uh, equipment that regulates the, uh, the amount of vacuum uh, going to the instrument. Mm -hmm. Ever since the first organs, it's all been about air, regulating the input of air, and controlling the vacuum. Correct. It's all, and that's what all these instruments rely on, isn't it? Yep. It's all vacuum operated. Mm -hmm. You might have an electric pump that, that produces the vacuum, mm -hmm. but all of the mechanisms, all the mechanics are actuated by vacuum. Yeah. yeah. Um, you also have a collection of music boxes, um, which we, we've got to see before we go. Okay. So would you lead me in there? Sure will. Okay. Let's, let's go in this other room, shall okay. we? Okay. <laughs> well, Dave, you're particularly fond of this. You've got a lot of music boxes, but this one you're fond of is because it's made in America? It's made in America. It's a Regina music box. It plays a 22-inch disc. Which and is what which I'm is holding what you're here. Holding. Uh -huh. It's remarkable. People throughout this program have seen all these instruments playing rolls, you know, yes. roll paper rolls. Mm -hmm. Not so much with this. Right. It's remarkable. Right. Yes. Um, just you and I, song, mm -hmm. which is the name of the, what we're going to hear here in a little bit. Um, but what makes this what makes this special? Or, or, or well, this is quality? a this is a double comb machine. Mm -hmm. It has two combs in it. The teeth on each comb has star wheels, and as the disc 
rotates this way across mm -hmm. these star wheels. It turns this star wheel and plucks each tooth on in the comb, and it that's what makes may the I, sound. May I touch sure, this? Sure, sure. Sounds like a harp. Right. Yeah. Right. Neat. Yes, that's the way it works. Okay, let's put that uh, put that on there. And, and while right. we're getting ready to hear that, let's talk a little bit about about you and your colleagues who belong to the Carousel Organ uh, Association of America. Right. I guess. Right. And when we opened this program, we were talking about street organs. Mm -hmm. You all get together once in a while, don't we? We do. We have uh, festivals. Uh, six or seven or eight of them a year where we are invited by festival organizers to play and participate mm -hmm. in their activities. So we do a lot of traveling all around the country, uh, acquainting people with our instruments, the kind of music they play, and a little bit of history mm -hmm. of how these instruments came into being, particularly we're talking about street organs. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. We have yeah. a lot of uh, community of interest amongst our fellow uh, organ grinders, and we have a good time <laughs> after grinders. the rally as well as during the I'll rally. Bet you do. Well, thanks for sharing this with us. We, You're we found it uh, most interesting. I, I, I didn't, I didn't know there was a collection like this in the area. I was really glad to find out about it. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, Dave. Um, and you know, for that carousel uh, organization, he was talking about one of the things they try to do by keeping these instruments alive is not only the history but to get people interested in protecting those old instruments that may still be out there. So if you're aware of any, know that there are people who care about them and can rebuild those. Well, we're going to leave you now, but first we're going to hear some music from this beautiful old Regina music box. Thanks for watching Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald. See you next time. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.